Khabib Nurmagomedov will most likely be in attendance when Dustin Poirier faces off with Conor McGregor, UFC 257. When asked about a potential run-in with the Irishman, he said he's not worried about it. Speaking at the Moscow press conference, he went on to say, why should I think about that? I like based on the situation. If you don't like someone or they don't like you, it's okay. If I meet someone I don't like, I like based on the situation. Recently, Leon Edwards tested positive for COVID-19 and was forced to pull out of his fight with Hamza Chumaya. Now, Stephen Thompson vs. Jeff Neal would headline the event. Leon Edwards released a statement on his Twitter and he went on to say another setback. But when you come back from the mud, you learn to put everything into perspective. This virus has affected many lives and families much worse than mine. Looking forward to getting this rebooked soon. Thank you for all the well wishes. Hamza Chumaya sent a message to Leon Edwards and on his Twitter he went on to say fast recovery and hope to see you soon. At Leon Edwards MMA. Nico Price has been suspended for six months and has been fined $8,500 for a positive marijuana test. Nico Price reacted and on his Twitter he went on to say thank you for all the kind words. I'll be back ready to throw down right away after this suspension in March April. At UFC at Sean Shelby, hashtag UFC. His fight with Donald Cerrone has now been changed to a no contest. A three run welterweight bout between Anthony Pettis versus Alex Morono has been targeted for UFC card on December 19th. Anthony Pettis is coming off a unanimous decision win over Donald Cerrone, and Alex Morono is coming off a unanimous decision win over Reese McKee. This octagon on December 12 is gonna be historic. Tell me, Davidson. Buy the pay per view. <laughs> Buy the pay per view. Yes, because you know, you're gonna be part of the history. The first time a fighter is gonna defend his belt in 21 days. You ready? Let's go. Let's go do it. Let's go do it. The pay per view is gonna be historic. December 12. Historic. Historic, the first time these the people need to understand. TJ Dillashaw in a recent interview with Brett Okamoto says that he wants a title shot right away as soon as his suspension comes to an end. I guarantee you this I'm getting my belt back. I'll be a three time uh, Bantamweight champion. Um, that is, that's a guarantee and uh, it's going to be faster than everyone thinks too. But look man, I want that title. I want it right away because you got a guy, Pierre Yon, that, that, that beat someone for a belt that was 0-2 in the weight division. You know, Jose Aldo had two losses and you beat him for the title. So how are you calling yourself a champion? You mean you're an interim champion. You know, that, that the belt has changed hands every fight. Um, there's been no one there that's been sitting there being dominant. And that is my belt. You know, so I want to come back and want that title fight. I know Adrian Sterling and Yon are fighting, which is deserved. Sterling's been looking good. He's dominant. Get that fight out of the way, and then I want the winner. You know, um, I was hoping they were going to fight this weekend coming up, or the 12th coming up, but that got pushed back, you know, so we'll see what comes of it. But, uh, I mean, there, there's no messing around. I don't want no tune-up fights. I mean, I've uh, been in the gym. I've been helping Warren Archuleta get ready for his fights. So it's not like I've been just hanging out. You know, I'm in, I'm in the best shape, man. I put on a good 10 pounds of muscle, and now I'm starting to lean it back down. It's been uh, quite fun to do some do some uh, meathead workouts and get pretty big. And not just what I'm able to do with it has been awesome. I've been feeling great in the gym. Um, sparring is awesome. So, um, well. You know what day it is? Tuesdays and Thursdays. Only the dedicated come in. See who we Tuesdays Fli and Thursdays. Felipe, my man. <laughs> One. Heck yeah. <laughs> Dan. Oh, oh damn. Dan. Oh, wait. No, Dan. Chris. Oh, no, Chris. Oh, shoot. Hey, I got you guys. Here you go. Here you go. Tuesday, Thursday. Dan, I heard your fingers hurt. Well, now your back's gonna hurt, bro. He's for landscaping duty. <laughs> Anthony Smith on Sirius XM said that he felt good and nobody could have beat him on the fight with Devin Clark. I was on, man. I don't think anyone would have beat me that night. You know, just where I was at mentally, I was just in a good place. I remember walking when they, you know, they're three, two, one, walk, and then my music started playing. I do remember that going through my head, like, it wouldn't matter who the f he was. Nobody was beating me. I was just, I was just on. It just felt really good. I was happy to be there. I was just in a, I was in a good place. I think that it's going to take it's gonna take more more performances and, and, and more moments like that fight. But the one thing I will say is that I am notorious for letting guys into fights that shouldn't be close. I usually fight to the level of my opponent. Like I typically, I would have a tough fight with Devin Clark and then have a tough fight with Gustafson. You know what I mean? Like those two things shouldn't happen. If you have, have a tough fight with Gus and beat him, you should smash a guy like Devin Clark. Typically, I, I that's not how I do it. I, Chill likes to say that I, I fight 
to my opponent's level and then just raise it just enough to win. Like I, I do just enough to win and no more. And I don't know why that is. I wish that I could change it. I just, it's just how I am. But, you know, I, I, I think I did to Devin Clark exactly what I'm supposed to do to him, what people would have expected had you taken away the last two fights. Like, you know, say I, those two fights didn't happen. I fought Devin Clark. What would everyone have expected me to do to him? I think that's what happened in the fight. Fall right into it. They're gonna grab the gi. Makes it easier for me to step and punch. Ray Longo on the Anakin Florian podcast gives his thoughts on Anthony Smith's submission win over Devin Clark. I think there was a there was a big gap in experience, and I, I, again, Anthony Smith, if you know him, I only know him a little bit, but I, uh, it seems like just a super super nice guy, intelligent, like him when he's on the broadcast booth too with you guys sometimes when they put him on. Yeah, uh, I just think it was you look the guy's fought the best of the best. He's fought everybody. Uh, that was a big step up for Devin Clark, and uh, I think it showed. All right, what are we opening? Door number, number two. two. Door, Door number two. two. Door number two. I haven't got bad eyes. I'll be crapping again, Joe. Where's number oh. two? I can't look because I'm behind the board. Tom, number two. Where we at? There's 12. Two. Two. It's, 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 two. There's no two. There we go. Yeah. Oh, jeez. Just what poke, poke me Oh, harder. my God. What is it? What is this world? Oh, I love a 12. Give us a 12. Give us a 12. Oh, it is freezing cold in here. Got the uh, got the space heater going, warming my feet up. Hello? Oh. The coffee, good sir. Oh, well, thank you. Well, hold on a minute. Let me check the temperature because. Hold on. Oh, no, no, no. Take it away. Oh, sorry, so, that, that's lukewarm. Nowhere near the correct consistency. Yes. It's ridiculous. <laughs> All right, so here's the Chick-fil-A line. That goes all the way up Division Hill, like past Discount Tire. And then this wraps all the way down like it's going to move and goes around the corner to Holland. Let me sneak out here. Goes all the way around the corner like you're going to move fitness and then loops back behind Chick-fil-A. There's cops with blinking lights everywhere. This is pure chaos. I'm not gonna eat this place for like two months. This traffic, this is insane. Hey, get me a chicken sandwich with some waffle fries for free.